really need you right now. I mean, what do I possibly do in this situation? The police on my case. The, I feel a loss. I really wish you were here. I really do wish you were here right now. You have no idea. I can't understand why you had to leave. Why? I mean, I thought we were in love, you know? I really wish you were here. Really do. Mind you, all you're puffing about with that garden. Just never understood your fascination with it. Always about the garden. Garden this. Dean, I'm doing the garden. I'm, I'm doing the garden again. I'm doing the garden! <laughs> There may be some kind of light source in there, but I don't know where that thing leads, so I aren't going in there without some kind of backup. No answer. No answer. There may be some kind of light source in there, but I don't know where that thing leads, so I aren't going in there without some kind of backup. Here we go. Let's find out just what the hell is down this tunnel. This is unbelievable. Believe 
Well, I just found it. <laughs> the only way I can describe this is Sarah's dungeon. No, not a real dungeon. Yeah, I'll call you back for the final visit. Okay. going through this alone. She managed to keep all of this a secret from me for over 12 years. I'm not 100% sure how I feel about that. Andy and Ruby's laptop I bought for them after Sarah left. I left it in the house. And we're recording now. Right. Dr. Bernard Harper with Sarah Hamilton, 21st of May, 2009. Session number eight. How are you feeling today, Sarah? No change, Dr. Harper. No improvement since last Friday's talk? Talking doesn't fix things. Words alone won't stop this from happening. Okay. There it is again, this ideology that we're under threat from. And I'll quote you here, Sarah extraterrestrial beings. Now, when I say that back to you, how does that sound to you? How does that make you feel? I know what you're doing. I get the mind games aspect of this, trying to get in here to see where my wiring went wrong. It didn't go wrong. We seem to be going on in circles you here. You came to me to get to the bottom of these thoughts. I'm here to help you, Sarah. Together, we can crack this case, so to speak. But I need you to answer the questions, and only then can we begin to see if we can make progress, get some closure. I'll ask again. How does the term extraterrestrial beings make you feel? Fear. I feel fear. And why is that? What is it about these beings that conjure up this feeling of fear inside you? Dr. Harper. When I was 12 years old, my father disappeared. He left both me and my mother for three years. We had absolutely no idea where he went. No note, no clue, no nothing. He simply vanished without a trace. My father had made us all dinner that night. Pizza and chips. That was his limit when it came to cooking. I remember it like it was yesterday. As time passed, my mother and I both learnt to cope, which as you can imagine, wasn't easy. And then one morning, three years later, I came downstairs ready for school, and there he was, sat on the sofa with a cup of tea in his hand, watching TV as if he had never left. He had no idea he had been away. I'm... I'm not quite following. So your father vanished without a trace for three years and... Three years, yes. I didn't know what to do. He was just sat on the sofa like he was every morning, as if nothing had happened. My immediate reaction was to run over to him and give him the biggest hug in the world. Here you go, Sarah. Take a tissue. Thank you. I hugged him forever. I asked him where he'd been. And what did your father say? He looked at me, confused. He insisted he'd not been anywhere, and even reminded me that 
He made us pizza and chips that previous night. Where was your mother? She came downstairs when she heard the commotion. The first thing she did was slap him. <laughs> His face was a picture. So, okay, okay, um... I know. Doesn't add up, does it? There must be some kind of... Oh, there's an explanation. Go on. On my 18th birthday, my dad sat me down to talk. He told me to pay full attention. Our family, our family has always... Go on, Sarah. I'm listening. I'm sorry. It's just difficult to even put this into words without the inevitable judgement. And why is it difficult for you? Because it sounds so... Because it sounds so... Go on. Because it sounds so silly. Yes. There we are. It's okay. It does sound silly. Alien beings aren't a real thing, Sarah. It's a combination of past memories and your child's mind filling in the gaps with make-believe so that you could cope as a child with your father's disappearance. Making up these beings was your cope mechanism. And that's okay. But there comes a time when we need to let go of childish things. No! No! That's not it. That's not it at all. These things have been taking our family for years. Taking? It's been happening to my family through the generations. They need us. They need us so they take us for our DNA. They're dying. They're dying and they need something within our DNA to recreate, replenish their species. This is what my father was telling me. This is what happened to him. A few years before he died, he told me everything. I swear to God, it's all true. I know I sound like a lunatic, but please, for the love of God, just listen to me. Oh, Sarah. I think we should end today's session right here. We can try again Why next won't you week. believe me? They're going to come back again, and I know exactly who they're coming after. My kids! Do you want proof? Here! Here's your proof! What is that? A scar? It's where they implanted something in me, so they can come and take me back whenever they wish, wherever I might be. A tracking device. Imagine living with that fear. I see. Okay, as I said... We'll continue this next week, and Sarah, please get some rest. Just what the fuck was this? Sarah was speaking to a psychiatrist? All this talk of aliens and abductions. Sarah, how and why were you keeping all of this from me? Something's telling me that I might find something else down in that dungeon.
Hey, Dean. Not really sure why you're showing me that. What is that? It looks like it should be important. It looks like there should be more pieces. Go and see if you can find some more pieces. Dean? Alex? Oh, this looks like the final piece. The only question left now is... I knew you'd work this device out. I always knew you would. I knew you'd figure out the truth. This is a message I recorded for you. A few years ago, the day of the last solar eclipse. I'm going to presume you listened to my tapes with Dr. Harper, so you know how significant eclipses are in my life, my family's life. I have the gene dean. And so do our children. Now, this is going to be difficult for you to process. I recorded this message in the case that I was taken. And because you're listening to this, I have been. And if I'm not there to protect you all, chances are they have or will have taken our children. Please, please understand that I never left you. Never. Now, this device, Dean, it can take you to the moon. The dark side of the moon. And I know, I know, it sounds like nonsense. You are our only hope, my love. Dean, 
be that man I know you can be. Come and bring your family home. Now, listen, in order to use this device to transport you there, all you need to do is... In It appears the message was too weak or it got intercepted before completion. Alex, what have I got myself into here? Hey. You're not alone. Remember? I'm with you at every step of the way. Let's have another look at this thing. This is fucking unbelievable. Here I am, on the moon. Sarah was telling the truth all along. So far, it looks like Alex has hit the nail right on the head too. Whatever the hell this place was, they were catering for creatures that require oxygen. Huge vents were pumping cold oxygen into the corridors like no tomorrow. 
Ruby and Andy must be around here somewhere. I have to keep moving forward. Going back isn't an option. Is it? I don't understand. Of course you don't. All this has been happening right under your nose. Gideon. Oh no, no, no. I'm not Gideon. I'm still me. I'm still Julian. Our meeting was never an accident. Remember when we first met? At the hospital. Sarah just gave birth to Ruby. You were a porter. Exactly. You see, we've always been watching. Waiting. I don't think you'll quite understand the importance of your children. Importance? These are my kids, and you're going to have to get through me to get to them. Not a problem. <laughs> Why? We need your children, Dean. We can't afford to lose them. Why are you doing this? What don't you understand? Without them, our species is over! Our species? But you're not one of them! I am, Dean! But what about our friendship? Our friendship, Julian! And the kids! The birthdays! Christenings! Christmases! You bastard. <sighs> Put it this way. You'd do anything for your own. Yes? Don't you dare! Try to justify the adultery and killing of little kids, you sick! I'm their dad, and I'll do anything to protect them. Anything, if that means killing you, then I'm past caring. I am past caring, believe me. And this, this whole thing that you've got going on here, whatever this is, it means nothing, nothing compared to the love I have for my children. I've been to the moon for them, and I'm taking them back home. Yes, I won't do anything for my kids. Anything! <laughs>
I need to figure out how to open this damn thing. I need to figure out how to open this damn thing. Because you need their DNA. You don't need to be doing this. Please, just let them go. Look out there. Do you honestly think I'd get this far and then just say, Ah, fuck it, because you say so. <laughs> oh, you make me laugh. <laughs> DNA. You don't need to be doing this. Please, just let them go. Look out there. Do you honestly think I'd get this far and then just say, Ah, fuck it, because you say so. <laughs> oh, you make me laugh. Two more minutes! I'll 
allow you the freedom of movement. After all, this is the best you see of your children. And indeed, yourself. Listen, I know you're probably waiting for the sun to be at its optimal, to be able to recharge whatever the hell that is. But regardless, you don't need to be doing this. But I am, Dean. I am doing this. Look around you. Absolutely no way out of this now. Excitement is at fever pitch here in Marywine, where in the field behind me over 1,000 revellers have joined together to watch the solar eclipse. However, it is not all plain sailing, as our reports from the One Cell Network that their entire network capability has gone dead. Me. You really want to honest answer? Answer. Because you were so determined. <laughs> it doesn't make sense. Oh, but it does. You see, watching you struggle, doing your absolute best, in such a... Yeah. Why don't you just kill me now? Oh, no. No, no, no. You see, my game. There's one final thing to see. And that's happening in just over one. Game! Game! There it is again! I'm going to kill you. I'm a god! Neither you nor anyone can stop me. Are you really that fucking dense? I'm going to kill you. <laughs> I'll go on. I'll play along. Bring it on. Some of that. No! We need to get out of here. Dad, I knew you'd come. I told you I'd always be there for you. Mum is here somewhere. I know, I know. Follow me. Are you two okay? We are now your here, Dad. Ruby, why was Cuddles in your den? When the last man came for us, we managed to make an escape from the house. We made it to our den before he took us. Why didn't you hear us, Dad? We were screaming for you. Daddy was... asleep. Listen, are you two okay? Did it hurt you? We're okay, Dad. We just want to go home. With you and Mum where we belong. I need to figure out how to open this damn thing! to open this damn thing!
No, no, we did it. I wouldn't be here with my family right now if it wasn't for you. By the way, that tea drinking contains 11.6 billion. <laughs> Sorry. 